opposite of whatever fun is. I believe it's wrestling with technology, and that's not so much fun. Just a wee bit. Oh, it's just a wee right. bit, yeah. Urgh, technology. <sighs> turn it off, turn it on. Try it again. Reinstall it. Restart Shake it. it. Shake it. <laughs> Blue screen it. Uh, okay, well, hey, everybody. Well, my name is Fraser Kane. I'm the publisher of Universe Today, and this is your virtual star party for Sunday, September 22nd, 2013. And for any of you who are, like, I don't know, you've PVR'd Breaking Bad, you're missing Breaking Bad, I, I don't know why you would. Uh, so for the who don't watch Breaking Bad, I, we really appreciate you joining us tonight. It's uh, it's fantastic. And we will make your sacrifice worth it because we've got a, a really great lineup tonight. And a whole lot of horrible technology that needs to be strangled. So, uh, you know, I'm not sure which, which of these things we're going to have uh, first. So I'm going to introduce everybody, and then they're all going to go off and battle their technical demons while we attempt to put on some kind of a show for you tonight. So first, we've got Andrew Dumbledon. Hey, Andrew. Hi, morning, Fraser. Uh, and so you're going to be bringing the uh, the Eye Telescope T3, which is fantastic. This is awesome. Uh, and you're in the you're in the UK, but you're controlling a telescope in New Mexico. That's right. And what's the what's the telescope? I think if people don't have a sense of what a wonderful piece of equipment this is that you're bringing to bear on our problems. It's like a twenty. Is it a twenty inch plane wave? No, the uh, the T3 is actually a. Uh, uh, 150 milli, uh, 150 millimeter refractor. Oh man, that's still that's a that's a great telescope. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. Also in UK, we got uh, Chris Kennedy, the new guy. Well, actually, were you in it one with uh, with Scott and not me, or have uh, you, is this the first time you've done a star party with us? This is the first one. I, first time I've su uh, successfully joined one. <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I tried a couple of weeks ago, and everyone else was clouded out bar me. Right, and then we we had to call it, yeah, because the weather yeah. was terrible. But tonight the weather's great. It's just technology that's our uh, our bugbear tonight. But uh, yeah. but you've got a, a great view of, of Jupiter, which uh, you'll switch to in a second, and we will all yes. ooh and ah, and uh, this is going to be the highlight of tonight. So I'm I'm really excited. Um, speaking of people wrestling with technology, we've got Gary Ganella. Hey, Gary. Hi, guys. So yep, I'm fighting it. Are you okay? Well. Uh, if you don't bring us any images tonight, we'll totally understand. Uh, but I at least need to see some kind of hard drive with cables dangling from it, you know, <laughs> at the very least, to show that you've made a successful kill. So uh, well, yeah. I, I need to actually go out of the observatory now and hit something with a hammer. So oh. uh, I'll put one of my does, does that work? Yes, it does. It the does. bigger okay. the hammer, the better it works. I'll All right. just throw up my stock photo here to hold my place and get back if I can. Fantastic. Okay. See? Okay. And there goes Andrew dropping off because technology is not our friend tonight. Uh, but that's okay. Chris is going to handle the whole show. We'll be all right. Oh, boy. <laughs> we got John Kramer. And John has been wrestling with some technology, too. Uh, hey, John. That's right. Hello there. All right. Joining the club here with uh, Technology <laughs> Challenge tonight. Yeah, I think uh, we... we Gave you a new direction at the last minute, so I think after this we'll sit down and we'll try and work through the technical issues and see if we can solve it. So, all right, uh, cool. And where are you located, John? Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Nice. All right, and we got Mike Phillips. Is that working, Mike? Are you just a static? He's he's dropped too. So, so, so Mike was all set up, ready to go, beautiful images, and then his computer completely blue screened of death on him. So. I give, I give up. I give up. All right. We got Roy Salisbury. No problem. Nothing. No problem. Everything's, everything's just fine. Perfect. Yep. No moon. Everything. Everything. It's great. You didn't leave the light on your observatory. Nope. Okay. We're good. All right. Cool. Okay. So uh, normally uh, when we do this, it's uh, mostly it's people in North America. So people on the West Coast, it's about uh, eight o'clock. People on the East Coast, it's about eleven o'clock. But this is great. We got two two people. Well, one person really from from England. Andrew is is in England, but then is using a New Mexico telescope. But Chris is there, and so here's the great thing: Jupiter. Three months before we would normally get Jupiter, and this is terrific. Check it out. <laughs> Like, that's it. This is the whole show. I'm just going to drop the mic. We are out of here, people, because oh, uh, because we got a beautiful view of Jupiter. Look at this view of Jupiter. That's great. This is sick. <laughs> that's real nice. Uh, it's about time I got one. 
Yeah, no, no, this is you completely knocked out of the park. Look at this. And so the, this is live, and so I think people can see now. This is uh, you can see how it's uh, wobbling back and forth, um, and that's because this is live video of Jupiter taken from England, broadcast into a virtual star party, and uh, shown to you no matter where you are. And if I stretch the uh, exposure just a second, I can bring you Jupiter and... Two moons. The moons. Look at that! <laughs> this is great. So, so what we have to do here is that because Jupiter is such a bright object, uh, you can't see both Jupiter and its moons at the same time. And so what you do is you overexpose... Uh, Jupiter, and that brings out the brightness of those two moons. And so, did we figure out which which of those two moons they are? Yeah, uh, the closest one to the bright blob that's Jupiter is Europa, and then the one just next to it is Ganymede. Yeah, that's great. And uh, it, it, you know, if you want to verify, there's a great program called Stellarium that you can use, you can install, and it'll show you the positions, the live positions of Jupiter's moons. And, uh, and so those moons will just move back and forth on varying sizes. The, the four Galilei, Galilean moons that you can see, with even with a small telescope, a good pair of binoculars, definitely in a, in a larger uh, telescope like this. So what's your telescope, Chris? Um, it's um, an 8-inch schmidt Cassegrain telescope, um, and its basic focal length is uh, 2 meters. But I've got a three times Barlow attached to it, which uh, triples that out. Oops. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> so uh, why Gabo Kiljabob? No, it's three months early and still no red spot. So this is this is the thing we have not seen so far. Is the red is the great red spot? And I had that two weeks ago as well. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and Tom Nathan also says, wait, no red spot. Um, oh. I, th I think, I'd have to double check, but um, I think it starts rotating into view in the, um, the next half hour or so, but I, again, I'd have to double check. Well, they, let's hope, but no, literally, you can know when the great red spot is going to be visible. It's any time it's not the virtual star party. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can you can find that. We're still waiting to see that, and I still we still have yet to see a transit of the moons going in front of the planet. Which and I'm going to rub it in again, but I had that as well last time. <laughs> uh, Ronald Mitch is asking, can you spl overlap split screen it? Are you talking about splits overlap split screen uh, his image of Jupiter and the moons? I'm not really sure if you can explain that. Okay, so also one thing that you can do is if you want, you can make comments and questions and feedback and give us some suggestions and any any requests you'd like us to view. So all you have to do, there's a bunch of places you can make those comments. Uh, you can make a comment over on Google Plus uh, on the event page. You can also make a comment on YouTube if you're watching this on YouTube, or you can make a comment on, uh, I guess, on Twitter, but I'm not really watching Twitter right now. I've got, because I'm solo right now, there's... Um, no one else is helping me on this, so uh, I would recommend, if you really want to make a comment, I highly recommend you just make the comment on YouTube. That is, I believe that's what I'm going to suggest. So re regarding the jo Jupiter transits, on October 12th, uh, I posted this just a couple of days ago, and I, I didn't know about this until recently, there's a triple transit. In other words, there are three of the four Galilean moons will cast a shadow onto the disk of Jupiter at the same time. And it, it's predominantly a European-style event. So mm. go, go, go make your plans and find this. Is, this. I've been observing Jupiter now, I think, seven years. And I think I've seen a double transit twice. So a triple, twi tri a triple transit is probably pretty rare. Yeah. That is pretty rare, yeah. It's amazing. Did you say October 12th? Yeah, I think it's a Saturday morning, so yeah, it's not not, not a virtual star party time. <laughs> yeah, well, we could make a special event just to do the see the triple transit. That's fantastic. Okay, well, we're going to come back to this image quite a bit, Chris. So you know, don't go anywhere. Uh, okay, I'm going to move on to John's view because I know John, you've got a, a list of objects you want to pull up. So, so this is a adorable little blue blob. What are we looking at? This is the blue snowball nebula. NGC 7662. 
and That's it's great. in the constellation Andromeda. And yeah, we're picking up um, a pretty good inner blue ring there uh, structure around the bluish central star and getting a good amount of the halo around it. So uh, it's yeah. kind of pretty good. Yeah. Um, and so, and this is a planetary nebula, right? Correct. This is a planetary nebula in the constellation Andromeda. Yeah, and for those of you who aren't aren't aware of what a planetary nebula is, these are the beautiful structures that happen after a star like our sun dies. And so you get this situation where the sun, after it uses up all of the hydrogen in its quartz, which is to helium burning, and then it bloats up as a red giant and then puffs out its outer layers. And these outer layers will expand away from the star and you get these amazing shapes. And so this is an example, and I know this is going to be a, a planetary nebula night, John. You're going to show us a couple more, right? Right. I'm going to try to, while everybody's going ahead and one of their other objects, I'm going to try to bring in a couple more different planetary. That sounds great. Okay, well, I'm going to move to Roy's view. And uh, Roy's got a different kind of nebula. And I'm going to guess what I'm seeing here, Roy. This looks like the elephant trunk. Yes, it is. Nice. This is great. And can you explain what your what your telescope setup is, Roy? This telescope setup is a uh, it's a two thousand millimeter um, R RC Ritchie Crichton. Um, the camera itself, I'm shooting luminance images, so there's no filters, just blocks basically infrared light. Um, and this was a five minute image. That's amazing. Uh, and so what's what's really cool here, right? So this is this is like a star forming nebula, and you can see, but it's but instead of it being like bright colors, it's dark. It's like you know, it's it's absorbing and uh, blocking light that's coming from the the stars that are behind it and inside of it, and that's how you see the nebula. It's just terrific. Right. If I was to do this in other color, other filters like oxygen or sulfur, you'd start seeing some, uh, you can create a color image out of that, and you'd start seeing some structure around it that uh, will give it more depth. Yeah, I've got, a, I've got a view of that from the Spitzer Space Telescope, and I will show that, because it looks quite different. Let's see if I can bring that up, yeah. Okay, here, check this out. So this is another view of what that nebula looks like. Now that's seen in infrared, so it's actually like right. the opposite of yours because in your view, your I block uh, all the infrared. Yeah, you're blocking all the infrared, and then in our view, uh, in, sorry, in this view from Spitzer, it's only infrared. So, but you can still see sort of the the structure of the of the object. But I mean, the fact that you're doing this exposure tonight for the Star Party is just it's amazing. That's terrific. See, and I don't know they they call it the Elephant Trunk Nebula, but that picture that you had there, it looks like somebody running with their hair on fire. <laughs> yeah, the, the hair on fire running man nebula. Isn't there already a running man nebula? So. There's a running man nebula, but that one looks better because you could see his legs and everything. Uh, so let's see. Um, Helen Reed asks, can someone get NGC 6822? 6822. What is that and what is that? that? Yeah. Um, Liz Crane says, what's so great about a red spot? <laughs> it's like my white whale. I. Come on, we've done, we've viewed this, this so many times and we haven't seen it yet. I'm, uh, it's killing me. Um, so, uh, okay, so NGC 6822 is Bernard's Galaxy in Sagittarius. Can you still see Sagittarius? Is that still up for you? Um, yeah, it's about 40 degrees. I should be able to get that. Okay, great. We live to serve. It's awesome. Okay, I'm going to move over to uh, Andrew's view. Oh, right on, Andrew. That that's awesome. Okay, so uh, so this is Comet Lemon 2012 F6. So this is a uh, a live view of a comet. Well, I have to admit, not quite live. This is from last night. The, oh, okay. Uh, the telescope gremlins that you feared <laughs> happening to me as well. So oh. we'll see how it goes. But I, I mean, but in astronomical is, terms, that's live. It's 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 roughly live. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just embiggen it, uh, just so you can see. It's this little fella here. I don't know whether it comes out on the screen okay. 
Uh, Tom Nafe asks, so what's the distance and length of the elephant trunk? I don't know how, how long it is, but it's 2,400 light years away. Uh, Brenda Shaw says, it looks like the headless horseman is about to throw his head, but he's been unhorsed. That's good, yeah, the running headless, because it's sort of like a pumpkin-y color, that, that one from Spitzer. Um, that's great. And, of course, everyone's going to ask, when will we see Comet Ison? But that's a, it's a morning object. I guess, I don't know, you could probably get it, Chris. Oh, see, now Chris is just going to show us the moon. Check this out. That's terrific. Chris, can you get the Terminator? I'm just sliding now. Nice. He's beat me to it because of, with all the problems I was having, it the moon just cleared the trees for me. I was going to slew over to that. but Look at this. Oh, wow. I'll just uh, tweak the exposure a bit. That's it. Like I said, we just call it a night. Yep. So uh, I'll leave it in your capable hands, Fraser, to name the craters as we go, because I've got no idea. <laughs> I don't have my Phases of the Moon app handy. <laughs> it's a useful one. Yeah, we, uh, if anyone does need to know the Phases of the Moon and the craters and objects, we've got a free Android app that we, we made. It's pretty neat. Called Phases of the Moon. So, uh, Oh, that's fantastic. Look at that. Uh, no, if David was here, he would be able to name these objects, but... Let's go right up there. Copernicus, yeah, Plato, I don't know. <laughs> it's almost like you're zoomed in, you know, you're too, you're too close. You can't get any perspective and see what the, the craters are. But that's just, that's wonderful. Ooh, hello, that's a big one. <laughs> that's a big one. <laughs> Look at that! That's amazing! Uh, I wouldn't recommend it for a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you're, I mean, you've got great seeing tonight. It's a, it's a little soupy in the air. I can see it's moving around a bit, but... I've but got some, some haze, but it's not too bad. Yeah, but it's really clear. It's good. It's good. It's a good telescope. I'm in, I'm I'm really liking the view from your telescope. Fantastic. Okay, well I will come back. You don't, you know, move around if you want, but that's uh, that's wonderful. Okay, I'm going to move to John's view. Continuing on in our view of planetary nebula, John, what do we got? As well, if I the, don't know. This is the famous ring nebula in Lyra, and it's a little bit out of fist, but uh, you can go ahead and certainly see the colors there coming out okay. Yeah. The background's a little bit off, not pure black, but uh, we're pulling it in pretty good there to show, buddy. Oh, I love it. Yeah, and I love that you get that you get those colors. So let, I'm just gonna again, I'm gonna compare and contrast because I think I'll show you what the Hubble Space Telescope gives you. Here you go. So here's the Hubble Space Telescope view of the Ring <laughs> Nebula. Uh, it's nice, you know, but like you see, you get this sort of orange on the outside, and then this this bluey green across the middle, and uh, and then just take a look at uh, just take a look at John's view, which at roughly equivalent. I'm having a hard time seeing the difference. Yes, add uh, add twenty billion dollars, and you could have that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm saving. I'm saving. <laughs> Uh, but uh, no, that's that's terrific. I mean, now now one thing that we always get this question is that uh, that star in the middle, and that star is actually not the dead white dwarf star. Apparently, that is a star that is uh, in front of it, behind it. Um, so you're seeing that star, but it isn't the one that's the actual dead star that's in the middle of this uh, planetary nebula. But wow, that's great. Okay, I gotta go back to Chris's view again. This is crazy, Chris. Stop moving. Go back right. up. Up. I'll back up again. Oh. Hey. Yeah. Look at that. And then I and then to compare and contrast, we'll go over to Mike's view. Oh, the whole thing. 
I got the whole thing in my uh, finder scope, which is a 50 millimeter refractor. But uh, I, I'm a, I'm disadvantaged, I think, for high res because it's very low for me. And it's kind of strange to think that I don't know how far the UK is from the east coast of the US, but <laughs> we're both sitting under the moon, effectively outside yeah. right now, right? The moon just rose for you, though. It's a little out of focus, maybe. Mm -hmm. It is, and it's hard to adjust. It doesn't yeah. have a real focuser on it. Yeah, well, this is just your spotting scope, right? Right, right. right. Yeah. Uh, so Scott Chapman says, incredible moon magnification. Can you see any man-made objects? No, you can't. Um, even with the Hubble Space Telescope, you can't see any man-made objects on the moon. The only way you can see it is with the orbiters. And in fact, uh, NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter uh, has been orbiting the moon and has returned images of all kinds of things that you can see. You can see all of the landers, all of the rovers. You can even see the footprints on the uh, walking across the surface of the moon, which is great. Um, uh, Sterling, oh, uh, asked, whoa, I got here. Do you guys start early? Uh, we started at 8 p.m. Pacific time today, and uh, it's already starting to get a little... It was pretty dark, I think, for the folks on the on the West Coast, so hopefully we're going to try and move to even earlier times, and then when, when we hit uh, the daylight savings time, then we jump forward an hour as well. So around December, we're, we start around 5 Pacific, and while in... in you know, the middle of June, we start around 9.30 Pacific. So it just depends on, on the seasons. Uh, Matt Arnold's asked for NGC 40, sorry, 4594. Oh, is that, uh, is that the request, Roy? No. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. I, I just tried getting that, and it's, I've got it, and I'll show it, but it's, it's going to need a really long exposure, but I'll show what I got. Okay, well, let's. I'll, I'll switch to what you got right now. Um, okay, so that is nice. Is that the iris? That, that's the iris. NGC 7023. And I will also... I hope you guys don't mind. Is that right if I compare and contrast? Sure. Uh, so you can sort of see... I don't want to, you know, compare what you're doing with the Hubble Space Telescope, but... It's great I, to sort of show cry, the difference. I cry foul. I cry foul. It's not fair. Um, here, let me show you another image of it. What's really neat about this one is it's you're using black and white, but in color it's this beautiful purple color. I can show you a color one, I, but I, it's not I would live. Love that. Well, that's okay. You so there's it. the black and white, and... There is the color one that I did. I'm just seeing it. There we go. Nice. Oh, this is great. Will has uh, brought up some images of... Okay, I'll bring those in. Well, thanks. I never finished this one because uh, the moon came up, and then it's getting starting to get... I'm losing about half the night on it, so... I want to get some luminance on it and bring out some of the stuff, but uh, I don't know if I'm going to get back to it. Okay, so I'm going to screen share the surface of the moon captured by NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. And, uh, yeah, so you can see here, this is great, so you can see here's the footprints of the astronauts walking across the moon. Here's an experiment that they set up. <clears throat> here's the, the buggy tracks where they planted the flag. So this is Apollo 17. The final parking spot of their of their rover. So thanks, Will. That's that's fantastic. All right. Before I crash again, <laughs> I thought, it's happened twice already. So I'm I'm getting a little leery here. I thought I would show you uh, some. I I just kind of wander around the sky sometimes because I have a limited view as to what I can shoot with all my trees here. And I I happened upon what is this phrase? This is the this is the Wizard Nebula. The Wizard Nebula. Yeah, I I saw a nebula and I said, oh, I'll go look at that. And then this is what I shot. So this is a five minute um, one by one bin in hydrogen alpha, and I was thoroughly impressed with this, given that the moon had just risen about the time that I started shooting these, and all these little bright spots and dust lanes. And I don't know if I see the wizard, but I thought it looked pretty cool. It's always nice to shoot hydrogen alpha when the moon is out and street lights are bound. Uh, I'm gonna, Chris is just moving around here. This is great. <gasps> 
could you pull out the Barlow, Chris? I know it take you have to do some setup, but then get a little bit more in the field of view. Uh, yeah, no worries. Would I'll you do that? Okay, that'd now. be great. Thanks. Um, okay, I'm gonna move to Andrew's view. Are you just are you demonstrating that this is live, Andrew? No, no, this is demonstrating it's not live. In fact, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got the 21st. So the, again, oh, okay, uh, yeah. we're still struggling uh, with the T3. So. Uh, I got some Malincam shots from last night, so I'll keep displaying those until uh, T3 t decides okay. to talk you to me. You tell me when it's when it's live then. But is the T <laughs> is the T3 color or or black and white? It is T3 is a color, so hmm. it's got a one shot uh, color camera on it. Yeah. It's a 150 millimeter refractor. Um, so it, when it starts playing ball, uh, I'm hopefully going to get the Crescent Nebula. Uh, but I also have a Crescent from last night just as a backup, just in case. Okay. Well, and so we've got your view of the dumbbell here from the from from with your mailing cam, and then we've got John's view, which is which is another view of the of the dumbbell. This is great, John. You're doing our total tour through all of the planetary nebulae. Uh, so this is uh, another example of a dead star, and I think in this case, that white star right in the middle actually is the uh, the white dwarf star for the the dumbbell. I think it is. Yep. Apollo is go, says the great red spot should be clearing Jupiter's eastern horizon in the next half hour. The thing is, it does drift slowly from slowly west from month to month. So it doesn't it doesn't matter. Apollo is go. It's hopeless. It is hopeless. We will never see the great red spot. Woe is me. That's great. Okay, I'm gonna move back to Chris's view. Yeah. So look at this. And then can you embiggen the screen, Chris? So we don't have the, uh, yeah. Man. I got nothing to say. Look at that. That's just beautiful. Yeah, it really is. It's just Good. like plas plaster of Paris. I always think when uh, when looking at that. Yeah, just okay. All right, I, I, I we'll be back. Don't don't go anywhere, Chris. Okay, uh, Roy. Here's what we got here. This is it. No, this isn't it. <laughs> Killing me. <laughs> <laughs> well, since this one was requested in the comments um, before we even started, um, so I figured I would bring it up. This one is where is it? I can't read it that small. Six nine four six. Yes, that's the fireworks galaxy, I believe. That's great. Yeah, okay. Since you guys were so hung up on the Great Red Spot, I thought I would just load an old image from September 10th for you here with the Great Red Spot right in the center. <laughs> right where it belongs. Right in the center. And and this was a fun one because it was my first one. Actually, I think it might have been my second one of the season, but you can see there's actually a little donut hole in the center and some... some uh, I don't know, swirling eddies around the outside there, like all within the ring. So there's actually detail within the, the spot itself. And then this is Io transiting right above it here. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. That would be amazing to see live. Yeah, it's it's pretty wild because you can actually see that it moves relative to the cloud tops. right? So it, 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 it orbits at a speed different than the planet rotates. Wow. So you can actually notice that, so... Since I'm getting skunked on real things here, I'm <laughs> bringing, it's not live, it's Memorex. Yeah. All right, well, let's just go back to the moon then. Oh, the moon. This is, this is just, I'm, I cannot believe how good this view of the moon is. That's Copernicus. That crater there is Copernicus, I think. Could Which be is Tycho. It? Is it Tycho? Oh, okay. It's a fresh crater, though. You can see all the rays coming out of it.
Uh, Wesley asks, how fast does the Terminator move on the moon? Uh, you can't see it moving. It takes 28 days to go fully through its cycle from new moon to new moon. So, yeah, you wouldn't be able to see it sort of in a, in a night of observing. Well, you'd see it a bit, but... Get your hands on our phases of the moon. You can you can move it back and forth with your thumb. You can see how fast the, the Terminator moves. Wow. You just watch that all night. Okay. We should do something else here. Roy, what have you got? This is you keep asking, so I figured I'd bring it up before. Did I you do it? Is one. it? Is it? Is it here now? Is this it? That's it. See, like right. I said, there's, there's, there's not much to it. That so this is NGC sixty eight twenty two and yeah 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 it's kind of faint. So you would need to. Much. Yeah, that's a, that's a three minute exposure. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna move to John's view. John, I, you appear to have brought us a binary star. Uh, actually, I'm just centering up a star to bring you here uh, uh, a globular, hopefully, so if you can pop okay. back to uh, me here. Okay, sure, I'll come back to you. Uh, Alberio, this is the double star that I was hoping to see. This is great. So this is Andrew's, Andrew's view from last night of Alberio. Again. It's a bit of a wide field of view. I can just about see some color. I don't know whether it comes through on the hangar. Oh, sure, yeah. No, I can see the orange for the one star and blue for the other. So this is a this is a, one of the best uh, double stars that you can see out there. It is absolutely gorgeous. Through an eyepiece, absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. That's great. Oh, let's go back to the moon. <laughs> I've, I, I am literally just absolutely amazed. This is just phenomenal. Like, I don't know why. Like, is it the seeing? Is it the the detail? Is it maybe it's they've added the HD? You've switched to the HD, right, Chris? I think it's the HD because that's yeah. really unbelievably sharp and clear. Yeah, it's just so sharp. Like, are people watching this able to see it as sharp? Like, if you've moved up to the, the 720 HD, are you seeing it this sharp in your view as, as we are? Because it's, it's unbelievable. This is the, I mean, this is absolutely a, a huge step forward in this technology. I might have missed it, Chris, but what camera is that? He might be muted. I think he's got the, the the brand new ASI, from what I remember. I'm curious what mode he's got it in, if it's in a, a wider field of mode. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. Yeah, we can't hear him talking if he's trying to talk. All right. Now, John? Now? Almost. Almost. Okay. This is okay, just I'm gonna a pre-image here. Never mind. I'm going to raise <laughs> Royce then, which is great. Look at that. M13. M13, the great globular cluster in Hercules. That is a 30-second exposure. That's it? That's it. That's wow. I, had to, I started at 90, and it just kept blowing it out. Yeah, yeah. That's phenomenal. And so, I mean, this is one of the one of the first objects. If you get a small telescope or a nice pair of binoculars, this is one of the first objects you're always going to want to look at. Is the is this this globular cluster? Globular cluster. Pardon me. Um, yes, because this one works in. I don't care what you're seeing is you you can see this through binoculars and. Yeah. Yeah, it's great, and there are hundreds of thousands of stars, all packed into this really tight area. And what's amazing is that the stars in this are very old. So the stars here trace back to almost the age of the universe. And so astronomers use these clusters as a way to, to look for things like, you know, they can look at it and see all of the young hot stars that have all died, and then they can chart and see that, that some of the other stars are, are, you know, certain ages of the stars 
within this cluster. And they found these really strange objects, which they call blue stragglers, I think, which seem to be uh, older stars colliding with each other and then going through a, a new phase of young, hot stars. When normally all of the, the young, hot stars should have detonated a supernova a long time ago, they, there are these new ones that are still in there. And they appear to be two regular stars just crashing into each other because all of these stars are almost orbiting this common center of, of gravity, like buzzing bees. And every now and then they smash into each other and it, you know, two uh, older stars smash into each other and create a nice, hot, young-looking star again, which may or may not detonate as a supernova again. So, so speaking of old and far away... I stumbled upon this one. It, it was just something that I saw, and it had a lot of galaxies in it, and I said, oh, I think I'll stop here and I'll shoot this. And I finally, a couple weeks later, had a chance to digest it, and I shot a kind of mosaic, like two different areas right next to each other, and sandwiched them together, and I think when I counted all the galaxies, there was about 76 galaxies. I didn't count them by hand. That was just kind of the report from, from the plate-solving mechanisms I had. And in digging through it, there were some that were members of this supercluster in, uh, I forget what where Abel is. I think it's Now, in, I'm only seeing your your icon. So is there a picture that you're uh, I thought I had it. No, let me see. Let's turn it back on. How about that? Are you saying that there might be technology failing uh, tonight? Yet again. I mean, this is about as fresh as a, a boot as you're going to get. Can you see it now? Nope. Oh, Lord. If I, if I click on his icon down there, I can see it. Oh, okay, yeah, no, that worked. Yeah, I clicked on his icon, so okay. So it's, oh, okay. Our technology is failing. Uh, yeah, all right. We're being let down left and right. Yeah, so if anybody hasn't upgraded, a couple of people are now noting that they've uh, they've upgraded the 720. So you should be able to, in the bottom right, in, if you're watching this on YouTube, well, I guess you have to be, uh, there should be a little gear that you can click that will let you go up to the 720 uh, resolution, high def. And do that, because it's, it's great. Okay, um, yeah, so there's a whole so, pile of galaxies. Uh, yeah, I, it's, just, it's just tons and tons of galaxies, and this is just a sub-portion of, of what I shot. And, and I like this one because there's a little barred spiral here, and there's another different uh, shapes barred spiral here, and there's a nice little grand spiral here. And my favorite one is probably this little tiny spiral right here. So different shapes and sizes. and So I'm going through counting all these things up and looking at these things. This one right here looks like a star, but it's actually not. And it's identifiable, identifiable by the catalogs that I use to, to check all this stuff out. And it's like a 17th magnitude. This is only a, a 10 or 20 minute exposure. This is a yeah. This is a 20 minute exposure in my new camera here, and a luminance channel. And so I looked at it. It doesn't doesn't give you the distance to this in this object. It gives you the the receding velocity. So I'm like, all right. Well, uh, so so if you read the blog post I put out, it tells you how to convert the velocity to the uh, redshift, and then the redshift can give you the distance. The distance that I calculated uh, based on the catalog values and all the math that I checked, I think is right. I was hoping a scientist could verify it for me. I think it's 1.6 billion light years away. Wow. Which I was just... Mon so I went and looked. At, you know, the, in, in the Earth's history, 1.6 billion years ago into Earth's history, there was single and barely multicellular organisms, like pre-dinosaur era. Right? <laughs> I mean, so <laughs> we're talking like super, super old, and yeah. I was just astounded that this was so rich in galaxies and that some of these things were just so far away. In fact, I think this, this thing right here next to it is a galaxy, too. It doesn't have a redshift measurement for it, so it could even be farther away. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to move to John's view, because now, now, John, now we're there, right? We are there now, yeah, thank you. This is M15, a globular cluster in Pegasus. Really pretty globular cluster, too. Not quite yeah. as bright and spectacular as M13, but it's pretty nice to look at the eyepiece as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, and then Andrew's got one as well, also M15. Yeah, the same one. <laughs> yeah, slightly different exposure. Again, uh, this one's taken through the uh, the Astro video camera, the Melling cam. Uh, Helen Reed is noting that it works on her Chromecast, and that's great. I I just got a Chromecast just a couple of days ago, so I had to pull some strings to get one out of the states because they don't sell them in Canada yet. 
Um, but that's great. So if you want to watch this on your Chromecast, you can. Uh, and Ronald Minch says, Comet Ison is close to Mars and west of the Beehive Nebula. Most telescopes should start seeing it after September 26th, around 4.30 a.m. So that'll be next week, I guess. We could start showing Comet Ison. And then we'll go on an, in that if some of our, well, okay, Chris <laughs> shows up on uh, and is able to return his, his view of the sky, that'll be great. Very cool. Okay, I'm going to go back to, to Roy's view here. Oh, that's a nice galaxy. What is that? Oh, that is... 7331. 7331. It is a spiral galaxy in the constellation Pegasus. It is... How far away is this? That is 40 million light years away. Yeah, okay. Mouse nuts. <laughs> <laughs> That's nothing compared to the uh, 1.7 yeah. billion that looks, you had. Yeah. But it looks so much cooler when it's closer, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's got like spiral design and all that stuff. I love galaxies. Really yeah. cool. Here, I'll even make it closer. And big in it. <laughs> I think I see the black hole in the center. <laughs> That's great. Uh, and then Chris is showing us more Jupiter, but now he's pulled his his Barlow out, and uh, and but what's great is you can see f three moons for sure. Can you see a fourth moon? Oh, he's blown up the. Uh, maybe it's behind, or is it way off to the side? Chris, go click that ephemeris thing again. Hmm. I should tell you. There's a little. Tricking the program there. No, yeah, it's off. If it's off on the right, or your wow. your left, because I think it's flipped, right? Because it's it's further over. It's on the side of the double, so keep going that way. And then, there it is, right there, right there. Right. <laughs> yep. Callisto. Can you go brighter, Chris? Oh yeah. Yeah. Nice. Boom. There you go. So that's Callisto. Right. You can see it's a tiny little disk, too. The other way. There you go. Look at that. Nice. That's I love great. The, the two there together are really neat, because you can see the one is bigger than the other one. The one on the left is bigger. It's not just brighter. It's actually bigger. You can... You can... So which one's Ganymede? The one on the right? The uh, the one on the left of the two, right? Yeah. Because it's his... Wow. It, the ephemeris is flipped from his camera view. That's really cool. There you go. Yeah, like that. Nice. <laughs> now it's on the right. And that's the way it would be in the sky if you could see it. That's great. All right, now I'm going to move. Yeah, we can hear you now. I was, was going to say, to answer the um, earlier question, um, I've got, as I say, no Barlow in at all, and I'm using that um, ASI uh, 120 color. So it's, it's a color camera, because uh, I'm not going to filter wheel or anything like that yet. When you were doing those moonshots, what, what mode would, did you have it in? Because it operates in several different like region of interests, I guess, right? Uh, that that was the the full that was the full sensor view, okay. um, yeah. and which is HD, in, I think. Or equivalent uh, of. It's, it's close to, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was beautiful. Oh, yeah, amazing. Speaking of, let's go to check out Andrew's view of the moon. Now, this is again from last night. As again. He, as he attempts to <laughs> hit, hit a telescope 5,000 miles away with a hammer. Yeah, I, I keep hitting a board and trying again, and it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, I'll. I'll Probably give up on it soon, but uh, yeah, we'll go go with archives, I think. Yeah, yeah, so this is a moonshot from last night, and you can just see the, the craters just peeking out of the, uh, or just catching the last of the sunset. And I think there's a nice little ray from this uh, craterlet here. Uh, I don't know whether it was actually caused by that, but I can just about see uh, yeah. a streak there somewhere. 
All right. Well, I think we'll, we'll show some final objects. So maybe if, if you could bring back that moon, Chris, we can get one last view of that moon before we uh, before we go. That would be... Well, one last view of Jupiter first. Let's do that. I agree. And then one last view of... Uh, oh, you put the Barlow back in. Although it looks like it's a different color. You said the... All right, I'll wait till he gets that set up. I'm going to go to Kit Roy's view of the Bubble Nebula. That is the Bubble Nebula. That's a uh, five-minute luminance image. Totally see it. I see the bubble. Now, just as comparison, so you've got that one, and here's the one that I've been working on that will be in hydrogen alpha, but these are. Uh, this is probably about 18 hours worth of images. Holy cow. <laughs> 18 <laughs> hours of images. That's 18 hours of hydrogen alpha. Wow. Wow. No kidding. Tonight I'm going to do uh, sulfur for about three or four nights, and then I'll do oxygen for three or four nights. And then you're going to bring them all together into one stunning image. One, one Hubble palette image. All right. I, I will permit you to bring that into the virtual star party. <laughs> uh, that's that's just something. Wow. Okay. Uh, Chris Jupiter is jumping around here. Yikes. All right. I'm gonna see what Andrew's got. Andrew, did you do it? Is this live? No. This is what oh. I was trying to get. Um, but you're so using it's still, it. All right. It's still only 24 hours old. So th this is what T3 can do when it's playing ball. Um, I'm just wondering whether it's general internet problems tonight as everyone's having the same trouble. Um, but yeah, it, it could have looked like this. We could have been capturing some, some nice color nebula. Uh, Howard wants to know where Gary is. This is here's Gary right here, Howard. Uh, with his view of the Bubble Nebula, which we've been showing the whole time, because he's actually out hitting his telescope with a hammer, I think. Oh. Um, a very uh, big hammer. Oh. <laughs> uh, Christian Rias Westfall says, Hello, my name is Christian. I'm from Brazil. And do hangouts about space and astronomy? That is awesome. Welcome to the Star Party, Christian. Um, or Christian? Uh, yeah. All right, well, I think we've gone through everything. We're all out of objects, so I think we'll just say goodbye. Uh, unless, Chris, if you can bring back that moon just so we can see one last view of it. Oh, I can sluice that, but I'm just going to torment you a little bit here. Um, <laughs> if you, if you look no, on, no more. <laughs> if you look on the image here... Um, is it, is it going to be the great red spot? Because <laughs> that would be uh, tormenting. Yeah, yeah, it it is just coming into view right now. It, it's I can see the it's a little Prove companion. It. All right, all right, <laughs> all right. Uh, uh, well, I'll buy, here, I'll buy him a second. Here, I'll leave you. My my parting shot was uh, maybe a few weeks back. This is a wide field shot of the North American Nebula in the heart of Sagittarius. Oh, that's or great. Cygnus, Cygnus. Rather. You have to so. tell me because literally, I'm not seeing. I'm seeing just your smiling face in the film strip oh. right now, so you have to tell me when you've switched to an image. I, normally okay. I can I can tell, but in this case, all yeah. I see is your mug. So. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not having a good time with this thing. It's been thwarting me left and right, and there's the, kind of the heart of the Milky Way there, too, to the side. I don't know why it's so red, but you know, I was kind of, this is actually three hours, not not to be outdone by Roy, you know, 18. That's pretty, pretty impressive. <laughs> Amateur. Yeah, I know. <laughs> And John, I just seen some stars. Yeah, this is the. Uh, I don't get it all in the frame of view, but this is uh, NGC 457, one of the nicest ones out there in Cassiopeia. Uh, the ET cluster or the OWL cluster is what folks call it. Oh right, okay, sure. This, yeah. this would be the eyes here, the main body. You just don't. I don't have enough uh, field of view here to bring it all in, but I wanted to give it a try. That's great. Okay, Chris, what do you got? We're ready. Where oh is boy. it? <laughs> uh, <laughs> just use your imagination, Fraser. Just, just tell me whatever you think I need to hear. 
under pressure. Do, 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 do. <laughs> ah. All right. Uh, I'm, I, I have to swap camera back and forth so I can actually talk to you. Uh, if you're looking, I think it's, it's, it's my bottom left-hand side. It, it's a bit fuzzy. My focus is a little off. Um, I'll go back to it. Can you see? I don't know. It? Maybe you can. Maybe you can capture some video. Well, we don't see anything right now. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right, everybody, peer at it. <laughs> it Will it to appear? <laughs> I don't. I don't see it. Very uh, yeah. Very yeah. Very often the the red the red spot in especially in iffy conditions looks more like a hole in the belt mm -hmm. than it actually looks like a red spot. It's a, and it's it's kind of a misnomer. It's red, but in in most cases it's kind of more of a salmon or an orange color. It, like it especially varies over the seasons. I, I thought that was a shot I showed from a few weeks back. It was fairly red, but you know, sometimes in live video, it does not appear very red. What do you think? That thing over on the left-hand side there does that? Is that it? I'm not sure. I see it, but I don't doubt that it's there. Sometimes <laughs> is that you, where it should be? It's in the southern it's southern equatorial belt on the south side, so it would be. The, the fatter of the two brown belts, yeah. which is the one on the bottom, and if it's oriented red, it would be rolling in from the left, and it would be on the bottom part of that belt. But it's God. it's so washed out on the limb, it's really I hard. To I see. I don't know whether like I see something, but I don't know whether I just yeah. I just want to see it, and so right. I don't know whether it's real or not. We're willing it. How do I even know what's real anymore? All right. Well, I, I Chris... should take a photo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you take a photo and, <laughs> and it's in there, then I think we can just we can stick a fork in this challenge and call it done. Move on to something else, which is I want to see. Uh, well, the, the the plan and there's a there's a astronomer who's going to be working on this is to bring in the International Space Station live. So this is my next. This is our next challenge. And Corey is planning to do uh, Star Trails live and try and get some meteor showers. So we're going to try and do that as well. Cool. Okay, well, thanks, everybody, for, for joining us and watching. I know this is the nerdiest thing that possibly exists on the Internet, and we're proud of it. So, uh, yeah, so, uh, so thanks to everyone who watched, and thanks to all the astronomers who joined us tonight. And uh, sorry, Gary, and, well, sorry for all of you having your technical problems. Uh, if you haven't already, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel that you're watching this on so you'll get uh, notifications whenever we release anything new, which is often. Um, yeah, and then what's next? I'm not sure if we're doing Astronomy Cast tomorrow. Pamela is on a uh, trip out to uh, New Zealand, so I don't know whether she can be back. So, uh, Yeah, cool. All right, well, thanks, everyone, for watching. Thanks, for everybody, for streaming their view. Amazing first uh, first show, Chris. Now I'm not sure whether it was the HD that was really doing the heavy lifting there, but your view was just phenomenal. So uh, you are you are welcome back any time. And I know the fact that you're in the UK and you've got a couple of hours before you have to go to work uh, it makes it even the, <laughs> the greater sacrifice. So we really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, uh, yeah. Glad to just, be here. Just Good wonderful. Job. Yeah, good job, and, man. Good job. Yeah, and Andrew too for for awesome. getting up early. The for for you, I mean, for me, it's like. You know, it's like early evening, but for the folks even on the East Coast, it's I know it's a real sacrifice. So we really appreciate it. All right. Well, thanks everyone for watching. We will uh, we'll see you all next week. And night, I will everybody. be back up next week with a new computer. Good night. <laughs> oh no. Okay. Good night.